Hello and welcome to Faithfully Stampin' with Jennifer Helm. I am Jennifer Helm, the Faithful Stamper and Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up! Today I want to show you how to make an explosion box card. This is an idea I learned a while ago, slightly different version of this box, and when I made it I didn't have the right adhesive, it kind of turned into a disaster. So I've been wanting to revisit it for quite a while, so I decided to pull it out of the repertoire for today's video. So this is a sweet little box. The lid is made of designer series paper and I used my favorite DSP which has tulips on it. And then when you take the lid off the card explodes. It's a small explosion. And you can leave it blank inside or you can add a panel for a sentiment. And so it can be a card or it can be a treat and a card all together. Or it could just be a box. So I'm going to show you how to make this. It's not really complicated. There's just a few steps to cut and score in order to make this box. So you're going to need a seven and a half inch square of cardstock. This is Highland Heather. And then you will also need a piece of designer series paper that is five and three quarters of an inch square. And I'm going to walk you through the steps to make this. We're going to start with the bottom of the box. So this is our seven and a half inch square of cardstock. And you will need a paper trimmer scorer or your simply score board, some kind of scoring tool. We're going to mostly score this piece, but we're going to do a little bit of cutting as well. So the first thing you're going to do is take this piece of cardstock and you're going to score it at two and a half inches on all four sides. So just rotate the cardstock and score it at two and a half inches. And when you're done, you'll have nine panels on your cardstock. Now, next up, I recommend going ahead and burnishing your fold lines now. We might do it several times but sometimes it's easier just to have really strong creases right off the bat. It's also a good visual for you when you're doing the next step. All right, so I can just see my score lines a little bit better. Next, what I want to do is I need to create the folds to encourage this box to fold in. So you have a couple options here. You can either use your scoring blade again on your trimmer or you can take your take your pick tool and we have an end with a stylus. It's actually a dual stylus. There's a smaller end and a larger end. It doesn't really matter which end you use. But I recommend taking your cardstock and lining up the points on your cutting track. Now remember, we're not cutting, we're just scoring. And this does not have to be perfect. We just want to really encourage these two pe these two corners, actually four corners, to fold in. So you can either take your trimming blade, I'm sorry, your scoring blade, and score gently just on this top diamond panel. You don't have to go all the way down to the bottom. If we get most of it, it's going to, to do the job that you want it to do. Or you can take that stylus and just run it down the paper. This way you do get right down to the corner if you want. And then you'll just repeat that at the bottom. Actually, I'm going to flip it so if you can see a little bit easier what I'm doing. And then you're just going to repeat this on all four corners. Since we want all four corners to fold in. This is the trickiest part of the entire box right here. And then once these four are done, we have one final step for creating the box. And that is where you need your cutting blade. So now that we've got our diagonal 
score lines on all four corners, we need to cut the corners so that the box doesn't have excess cardstock. If you didn't cut these corners off, I really don't think the box would go together well. There'd just be too much going on on the inside and it wouldn't want to play nice. So we're going to cut the corners diagonally from score line to score line. So you can always use a ruler and some scissors, but I like to line up my score lines on the cutting track. And this is the one thing I'm using my cutting blade for. So when you're done, you'll have four triangles. And a lot of the time I say, you can save those for another project. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna recycle these because they've got that score line on them and I just don't need to encourage my paper hoarding habit. So it's up to you what you wanna do with those four corners. So here's the last one, lining up those score lines. and then moving them to the side. And so you'll have a shape that looks like this when you're done. And you can just go back and reburnish those main score lines, those initial ones that we did. And then pinch in one of those diagonal lines we have and give them a nice press with your finger. And this is how we're forming the inside of the box. And because we have those diagonal lines, this is going to want to give in the middle where you want it to. I've seen some ladies who are able to just kind of push that shut and it comes out beautifully and I would never have that luck. So I like those score lines. And you'll end up with a shape like this. There's the bottom of our box. Just like that. Moving on to the lid. We have our five and three quarter inch square piece of designer series paper. What we're going to do here is score on all four sides at three quarters of an inch and one and a half inches. Now here's the important part to remember. This is designer series paper. It is much thinner than your cardstock. So if you score with a heavy hand, it's going to tear the paper. It's my least favorite sound. So press gently. So I'm gonna do all four sides at three quarters of an inch. And usually what I do is rather than press really hard, I press very, very gently and I run my score blade back and forth two times. Just gives me enough that I can see the line and it'll fold where I want, but I'm not tearing the paper. And so I'm gonna do that three quarters of an inch and one and a half on all four sides. And then we have a little trimming, not as complicated as on that bottom of the box, to create the lid. You've already done the hard part. And let's see, one and a half. And, yep, I got them all. Sometimes if your designer series paper is super busy, it's a little hard to see where your score lines are but they're there. So you can look at whichever side of the paper is easiest to see your score lines at this point. What I'm going to do first is fold on all my score lines. So two on each side. And again, this is just giving me, whoop, must have pressed a little hard there. I've got a tear in the paper, but that's okay because I'm gonna cut that part off. So these nice crisp edges will give you a nice crisp look to your box. So this is the hardest part to show you because it's not easily seen on camera, but if you look at your designer series paper, you have four squares on each corner. What we are going to do is cut off the bottom two on each side and then the outer one. So I'm going to grab my scissors for this. I like to trim the bottom first, and this is when if you have busy paper, it's a little hard to see where you're cutting, but, and then I go back and I cut off that one outer square. So basically I'm cutting a staircase, and I'm going to repeat that on each side. Whoop. So when I am done, and if you're really ambitious, you can save these little squares. I actually thought about it for half a second. And then I thought, no, you're not crazy. 
but when you cut off your squares, you're going to have, I call it a little temple shape or a staircase. And it'll be that way on each end of the paper. Really, it'll be on all four sides. And that's creating the shape for our box lid. There's only one more little bit of scoring we need to do here in order to get our lid to work the way we want. So once you get all your squares cut off, what you need to do, there we go. So you'll end up with a shape like this. What we need to do now is encourage this box to do what we want to do and create a lid. So we're going to make a diagonal score line on each of these small squares, the ones that we left, and just do a really small diagonal line just on that square. So I'm going to employ the same trick that I did before. Whoop. And line up my points with the cutting track. But instead of cutting, I'm just going to grab that stylus tool again and just very gently create my score line. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. We're just encouraging the flaps to fold the way that we want them to fold in order to create the box lid. So I did that on the top and bottom in case that was just slightly out of camera range. So we will go ahead and assemble the lid first. So what I recommend first is going around and you're going to pinch in where we just created those score lines and give it a good pinch with your finger. It's really going to cooperate because of the thinness of the paper and because of that score line. So it should fold nicely for you. Now, this next step you can skip if you want, but I want my lid to cooperate. So I'm gonna take some glue dots once I find where I put them. Oh, there they are. So I'm going to take my glue dots and I'm going to swap out the end of my take your pick tool from the stylus end to my piercing tool end. This I just find a little more cooperative when I'm dealing with glue dots. And I'm going to take a glue dot right off the roll. It does not have to stay in perfect circular shape. I just need it to come off the roll. And I'm going to add a glue dot to half of that small square that we put the diagonal line on. It doesn't matter which half. You just need the glue dot on one half of each square, so four glue dots. This is really the only glue that you will need for the entire box. And you could skip it if you want, but I find it just is a little helpful. So once you get your glue dots on, just go ahead and pinch those corners together just like we did a moment ago, except now we've added the glue dot. And the glue dot keeps those corners together, and voila, our box lid is almost done. So just go ahead and fold that upper flap in and give it a press. Now, if you have a piece of paper that is very non-cooperative, you really should be able to do this without any glue, but if you've got a piece of paper that doesn't want to cooperate, no matter how crisp your edges are, don't worry. Just take some adhesive here. You could do a light line of liquid glue or tape runner. Put some glue on that flap and then fold it in. And that should do the trick. But there is my box lid with only those four glue dots to hold it together. Now before I put the lid on the box, there's just one thing I want to do, and this is optional. If you want to create a card out of the box, you will need a two and a quarter inch square of cardstock to fit in the bottom. You can add a sentiment if you like. This particular card, I don't want to do a sentiment, but I did want to add a little accent stamp, which I forgot to put on my work station. Um, this one you can, it's a photopolymer stamp so it's hard to see but once I put ink on it you'll be able to see it. This is just a sweet little accent stamp that comes in our flowering tulip stamp set. 
and I'm just going to accent two of the corners with it. Keeping this nice and simple, like that. And now, I can take this panel and a little bit of adhesive. This is stamp and seal. And this goes in the bottom of the box. Now you can do this step before you assemble the box if you want, once you've got those grid lines so you know where to put it. It's up to you. So once you have the box done, whether you want a sentiment or not, just go ahead and pinch the box to give you the shape. Grab your lid and slip it right on the box. And just like that, we've got a sweet little box. This would be perfect for favors at the holidays if you host a, a big dinner, if you have pretty Christmas or autumn-y designer series paper. This would be lovely um, with a little treat on it at every person's plate. You could put a tag on it with their name. You can tie it with ribbon or not. I'll show you a sample in just a moment. But I'm going to decorate this box just a little bit. So I'm going to take a couple of circles. I'm going to punch a two inch circle out of Gorgeous Grape. And then I'm going to grab some basic white cardstock and a stamp that is also from, oops, since I talked about it, I'll show it to you, the Flowering Tulip Stamp Set. This is one of my favorites from the new catalog, and I really like the circular stamp. It says, you are so thoughtful with thank you running through the middle. And some more gorgeous grape ink. I'm going to stamp like that. Close my ink pad up. Grab my one and three quarter inch punch. And punch that out. These two are going to get layered together with a little bit of stamp and seal. Then I'm going to add dimensionals to the back. You could glue this flat on the box if you want. I like to pop it up just a little bit. You don't want anything too heavy on the top of the box for obvious reasons. It's a paper box, but you can decorate it any way you like. So, uh, oops. I'm going to put my little tag right there in the center of the box. I hated to cover up so much of that paper though. Now to finish this, I stamped and die cut two of the smaller tulip images from the um, flowering tulip set. I'm gonna add a little bit of stamp and seal here and slip them behind the label like so. And then I thought just for a nice little finishing touch, a couple of our brushed brass butterflies. And let me see. I like using my take your pick tool for things like this. And I just thought I would put a little butterfly at the top there. This really suits to put those butterflies there. And then one more up here on the tulips that I added. like that. And just like that, I have a beautiful little box. So I could put some little chocolate treats in here along with my message. I could just put the chocolate treats in or I could just have the message. You've got a variety of options there and you've got a sweet little box great for any occasion. I do have a couple other samples to show you. This one I did as a Mother's Day box. I used a bright piece of designer series paper. Sometimes designer series paper is a little busy for a card front, but um, I really thought it suited for the box lid. Added a different, this is our double oval punch, some little floral accents, and then this one is a Mother's Day card. You could even fold up money and put in a little box like this. It would be great for a graduation gift, I was thinking, because it's about to be that time of year. And you can also, if you prefer, keep your decorations simple, but I tied a ribbon around the outside of this box and simply used that double oval punch to add a thank you tag. This, as I said, would be great. You could just hand write people's names on for place settings. Slide that ribbon right off, and then this one just has a little accent inside. So that is our explosion box card. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make that. If you have not already, I would love it if you would subscribe to this YouTube channel. 
and that if you click the notification bell you'll be notified each time I go live with a video or post a new video and typically I do that twice a week. You can also follow me over on Facebook as The Faithful Stamper. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you give this technique a try. Take care and happy crafting.